Welcome to Airheads. Coming up, Holy Joe, Ted tells us when enough is enough. Aiming high, Tony Bielis explains arboreal elevation. And Springer love action, Phil explains why it's not just about the pneumatics. First, we're back down the docks with Darren. Having access to an extraordinary hunting ground means you have to play by a different set of rules. One area Darren's been told to focus on is the grain stores. There are all sorts of pulses, rice and seeds which obviously attract vermin, but because of the hillocks of foodstuffs we need to be environmentally friendly and so can only use lead-free pellets. So I'm actually in a, um, a food store so I'm not allowed to use any lead pellets at all. So. I've got some of these Gamo lead-free, environmentally friendly pellets. Um, I've had a quick check on Zero, and they look absolutely superb. And we might get a few rats tonight, but I really want to concentrate on some feral pigeons and uh, knock some of these out of the buildings if I can. And the reason I've gone for the Drone Pro tonight is there's going to be a lot of ambient light and also a lot of security lights. And there's going to be times when I'm going to be shooting directly towards these lights so I couldn't risk using anything tubed which is why we've gone for digital tonight. There's an increasing number of lead-free options on the market and Gamo has kindly sent us these to try knowing we can only use a green option. We know they're controversial as a hunting tool and we're interested to see how they perform. We're focusing on the ferals tonight. They roost along the girders, which are helpful as a backstop. I was hoping that the bad weather would drive a lot of the pigeons in to roost. The pigeons come in here any cut. But I was hoping they'd get in here a lot earlier. So it's looking quite, now there's one over there, David. So I'm gonna put the thermal down, go grab a rifle, and we'll start having the clear up in here. So they're already in here. It's our first bird of the night. Unfortunately, it drops on top of a rice mountain. So, despite there not being any lead, I'm not allowed to leave any dead animals in here either. So I'm now going to do a bit of mountaineering. I don't know what that is, but in any case, wish me luck. <laughs> We've seen beans, rice, wheat, sunflower seeds. And these feral pigeons, absolutely nothing to them. Weightless. You'd expect them to be really fat and chunky, like me. There are not masses of birds. We move from grain store to grain store, spotting and shooting a couple at a time. The lead-free pellets are accurate, but are they as effective as lead? No. It is up to the shooter to raise his game. Where he can, Darren is head shooting, but the pellet seems to pass through this pigeon without that all-important knockdown power. Again, there's absolutely no weight to this pigeon whatsoever. Um, the headshot, feathers come flying off, and it basically just shrugged its shoulders because we're, we're just getting 100% penetration, over-penetration. And it seems cruel, but I don't think it is cruel because obviously a headshot, it's dead. Um, I'm just used to, you know, the knockdown power and the, 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 the shock of lead. Um, but, you know, there's good reasons why we can't use lead here because of the food source. The lead debate is not going away, but rules are rules. Lead free is a necessity here, and it doesn't stop us having a great night sport doing an effective pest control job. The pigeons die. The shots may not look as destructive, but as Darren says, a shot to the brain will kill the bird. Uh, we started off, I was a little bit cautious because we didn't seem to be getting the outright kills that we, you know, you'd normally expect with a 2-2 air rifle using um, standard bone pellets. It just means I had to raise my game and make sure that everything was clean headshots all the time. But yeah, no, it's a, it's a really interesting place to shoot, an absolute eye-opener for a, you know, a, a farmer like myself who's just used, used to um, the browns and greens, as we say, and to come into the town and, and shoot like this. I'm really enjoying it. The dockyard is not just providing a great backdrop and great air gun hunting, it also means we have to step out of our comfort zone and explore new strategies. And that's always a good thing.
Darren bringing light where there is darkness. Now, someone who brings darkness where there is light, it's David with Hot Air. This is Hot Air. A newspaper has found an air gunner who supports the bill to license air guns in Scotland. Kenny Grant, whose shop in Dundee sells BB and air weapons, told the Dundee Evening Telegraph that a licensing system would be a good thing. It'll stop every Tom, Dick and Harry from trying to get their hands on an air rifle, and that can be a positive step, he said. The shop already asks for two pieces of identity before it will sell an air gun. While some companies offer discounts in the January sales, Gamo is offering discounts for Memorial Day. Memorial Day in the USA is similar to Armistice Day in the UK. Gamo knocked 15% off its products and offered free shipping to mark the occasion at the end of May. Airgun Emporium Ronnie Sunshines has been recognised for its people development and customer satisfaction. Team Sunshine were treated to a black tie do as finalists in this year's Chamber of Commerce Inspiring Hertfordshire Business Awards. An appeal by the Air Cadet Organisation to build new facilities, including an air rifle range, has reached £1 million. Sir David Jason, best known for playing the role of Del Boy Trotter in Only Fools and Horses, presented a cheque on behalf of the Fairfoot-based RAF Charitable Trust for £125,000. The money will go towards the air rifle ranges, as well as flying scholarships and flight simulators for the Air Cadets. And finally, when you're next out shooting some bunnies, you'd better check the burries, just in case there's some ancient artefacts. A rabbit warren at Land's End in Cornwall has unearthed buried treasures dating back 8,000 years. Archaeologists found Mesolithic stone hammers, arrowheads, scrapers, and a waste from a flint toolmaking factory, thanks to the bunnies. You are now to date with Hot Air. Aiming for accuracy, targeting the truth. Now, our hunting quarry doesn't grow on trees, but some live there, and we need to know how to get our shot up there. Here's Day State's Tony Belis. When you're shooting horizontally, as we're going to practice on now, you can go out to your various points of zero. This rifle zeroed at 35 yards, so that would be on the crosshair at 35 yards. But if the shot's elevated and up in the trees, which is likely to be where the squirrel is, uh, it, the shot will go high, and it's a, the scale of a climbing pellet, really, as you get up towards 45 degrees, when it's going quite a bit above the point of impact. So you have to know what you're doing. You have to be able to practice, and you have to be able to know that above 30 degrees, you're all right. 30, 35, you're starting to climb, and at 45 degrees, you're quite a way above the fall of impact at 35 yards, and therefore you would aim low on that target. Those monkey nuts there are about 35, 36 yards away. So I'm just going to check zero at uh, 35 yards. Okay, so everything's on, on the level. What I now want to do is make sure I've got everything right by shooting a, at a mark on a tree, which I can see is sort of the sort of area that I'd expect it to turn up at. Um, so from my experience, I'm going to aim at that mark and then I'm going to reduce my elevation slightly to allow for the, uh, the angle of the rifle. And I'm hoping I get it right. And if it doesn't, I recalibrate my mind to adjust more or less. Now that's maybe a quarter of an inch low, which will do. So if it turns up at that sort of range, and at that sort of angle, I know exactly where to go. Thank you, Tony. There now follows a party political broadcast from the I Love Springer Air Guns Party. It's Air Tech with Air Gun World and Air Gunner technical editor Phil Price. I guess, like most people, I started my air gunning career with a spring gun. Um, this is a particularly modern, very luxurious spring gun, but even basic spring guns are where most of us started. The big advantage they have over modern pre-charge guns is they're self-contained. You just simply pick up your gun, your pellets, and away you go. If there are rats around the barn and you just need to get out there after them, no problem at all. This is a particularly accurate gun. It's, it's a very expensive gun, but there are all sorts out there. 
and I think for many people they're all you need. They're simple, efficient and most people with a bit of mechanical aptitude can service them themselves. A pre-charged gun in my opinion is always much better being serviced by the manufacturer or a specialist shop. Really I don't advise tinkering with them. Whereas most people with a few Allen keys and some basic tools can service one of these and get years and years of reliable service from them. Well, James Marchington was getting some grief for his carpet creepers last week. This week, he's housebound, so he's just scaring the neighbours. Grey squirrels are becoming a real problem around my part of the country. Their numbers are booming, and they're starting to do some real damage to trees and songbirds. They're also inclined to bully all the birds off the bird feeder. Even this pigeon gets pushed off and has to make do with their scraps. He comes back later when the squirrels are gone, but he still can't work out how to get at the food. Anyway, the squirrels are beyond a joke. Prince Charles wants them exterminated, and who am I to argue with him? So, I've set up a bait station nicely in range of my office window. Actually, it's on top of the ferret hutch, but the ferret doesn't seem to mind. Round here, it seems to be peanuts that draw the squirrels more than anything else, and they attract a whole host of other things as well. Actually, setting up a bait point is a great way of finding out what's on your patch. Better still if you can fix up some sort of trail camera to watch when you're not there. First to arrive on mine was this crow, but the squirrel quickly saw him off. The crow wasn't having that and launched a counter-attack. Next up was this jay. I know some keepers have to shoot them, but I don't because there's not many around here and they don't do any real damage. Nighttime brings other visitors, some very small and others rather larger. That fox was so confident he came back in the daylight and didn't seem at all bothered by my zeroing target right beside him. As it happens, he's safe enough because I can't use anything bigger than an air rifle here because of the neighbors. I have managed to kill a couple of squirrels like this one. But my most satisfying result so far was when I was waiting for a squirrel and along comes this mouse that's been chewing his way through my chicken feeders. He won't do that again. Thank you, James. That man has such prey drive, but in a very low gear. Right, Ted, someone wants a word. Whoopsie daisy, Ted. I've only got to put a chuffing pellet through the roof. Do I need to ease off the gas a smidgery do? Twelve foot pounds. If I'm going to make the hit, four foot pounds if I have any intention of missing. I know that 12 foot-pounds will go through thin tin. I know it will. Um, 
So if you're gonna use 12 foot pounds, which you're going to need if you're gonna put them on pigeon's breasts, uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna need that power, put it this way, any power capable of hitting a pigeon with a center body mass is enough power to go through a tin roof shed if you miss. So you'd better be hitting. Yeah. <laughs> Right from making holes in tin roofs to making dents in steel plates, it's our very own Billy the Kid, Steve Taylor's down the range at Ronnie Sunshine's. In the next of our pistol shooting series, Steve explains how to position yourself in front of the targets. On a course of fire, depending how the plate array is actually set out, the golden rules I tend to adhere to is if it's a symmetrical course of fire, set yourself up in the middle of the stage so that you don't have to go more to one side than the other. If it's a non-symmetrical course of fire, tend to set yourself up on your most difficult plate. That way, you'll naturally come round onto your, onto your natural point of aim on that plate. Get a good sight picture on that plate, line yourself up so that basically you could shoot it with your eyes shut and then wind off to your first, your first plate. And then when the buzzer goes, you come straight out with the gun, pick it up, pluck it on your, on your first plate, fire the way through, and then come round naturally onto your point of aim that you've just set up and fire your, your shot on your most difficult plate and then onto your stop plate. For more information about the three on-site ranges, all for the latest air rifles and pistols, visit Ronnie Sunshines in Berkhamsted, Hertfordshire, or online shop ronniesunshines.com. Thank you, Team Sunshine and Steve. Now, here's a roundup of the rest of the action on YouTube. Charlie Jacoby here. This is my roundup of the best air gunning on YouTube. Squirrel shooting plus rabbits and pigeon is a compilation of a few shots over the last month or two when, says filmmaker 01480 Casey, he remembered to take the camera with him. Now, rabbit shooting. SRS Power is out with the Virac HW77K in 177 and Air Arms S310 in 22. In the USA, it's a bad time to be a yellow bellied marmot as S18 Hedberg goes rock chuck hunting with a 25 calibre Marauder behind his neighbour's horse barn. The new film from Free Man Shooting is Air Rifle Hunting Magpie's Pest Control Video 5 2014. He is one of the air gunning YouTube greats. Right, that's the hunting films done. Now let's look at the regular air gunning shows out this week. Air Gun Gear Show reviews the Umarex Colt Python 357 CO2 BB air gun. Air Arms Hunting SA brings out long range shooting at its best video competition results. Our South African air gunner has run an air rifle video competition and here are some of the entries. Staying in the Southern Hemisphere Airgun Brazil has had flu, he has been held up by the rain, but he still pulls one out of the bag, finding old videos of slow-mo fizzy can shooting. Let's hope his countrymen use the same skills to get those stadiums built on time. And finally, a poem from Varminder magazine. Not very visual, I agree. This verse penned by Apple was originally posted on the Yellow Airgun forum. Here it is being sung. Now surely that sparks your curiosity. Click on the links to watch the videos or you will find them in this film's description if you would like to send in a video for air streaming ping me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv thanks for watching we're back in a couple of weeks this has been airheads